and Nick here, hope you guys are doing well. And though nearly 70% of Earth's surface is comprised of water, only 3% is considered fresh and drinkable. More importantly, most of that already very striking minority is kept away and hidden from us in polar ice caps or glaciers. So take the very evident lack of natural drinking water and then pair it with the fact that nearly a billion people still lack access to clean sanitation services, of which access to fresh water is at the top of the list. And you can slowly see how the world's oceans start to look a lot smaller. In fact, for being one of Earth's most abundant molecules, water creates a problem for many civilizations across the globe. And this global quandary has led to the ambitious goal of trying to make oceans drinkable. That's right, making seawater drinkable has been at the top of the list for scientists and researchers alike. And they are looking for a next generation solution that's one, going to require a ton of innovation, and two, a whole lot of processing power. So much so, in fact, that they are looking to reinvent the boundaries of modern supercomputers. Let's check it out. Researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory believe the answer lies in carbon nanotubes, as well as a whole lot more, but let's start here for now. Carbon nanotubes are these microscopic cylinders that when fastened together can act as a very effective water filter. Essentially, their radius is wide enough such that water molecules can diffuse through, but tight enough where larger particles like salt and minerals aren't able to pass. Now, I think it's important to take a step back for a sec and just talk about the scale that we're dealing with because it's truly unimaginable. The width of a single carbon nanotube is more than 10,000 times smaller than that of a human hair. And once you fasten a billion and billion of these carbon nanotubes together, the result is an apparatus that's very good Good at turning seawater into fresh, drinkable water for everyone. As you can probably imagine, scientists strive to find the best possible filter, and doing so involves testing various combinations of different nanotubes. And when you're dealing with data points that are in the order of a billion or even a trillion, then you can see how using traditional means to perform any sort of meaningful analysis is really hard. Scientists need to be able to vary parameters like filter times, water salinity, or even nanotube width, all by manually manipulating materials that you need to see using an electron microscope. The inefficiency, complexity, and downright tedium that would surround an ordeal like this make the goal of drinkable oceans very, very far-fetched. Until now. Enter exascale computing. In what would be comparable to 50 million desktop workstations just daisy chained together, exascale computing promises to be a revolution to the field of scalable information processing. An exascale machine could complete some quintillion calculations per second, and just for reference, it would outperform the world's fastest supercomputer, the Sunway Taihu Light, by a factor of 10. Clearly, the colossal impact that exascale computing could have on issues like desalination is exciting, and researchers and engineers are working tirelessly to make it happen. In fact, the US Department of Energy actually commissioned its own ECP project, and they've given grants to six major technology companies to pursue exascale research and development. We could see rapid advancements in fields like quantum mechanics, weather prediction, and now saltwater filtration. More importantly, all of the fields that I mentioned are ones that are constantly plagued and stagnated by lacking computer resources. And it seems like the exascale revolution is a necessary jump, not only to create a more efficient and cheaper saltwater filter, but also expedite development in troves of other spectacular research. From a consumer or public perspective, a lot of these changes could actually take place entirely in the cloud. For example, Google recently announced the release of their cloud TPU architecture architecture, which would allow users to gain 11.5 petaflops of computing power to accelerate the training of their machine learning models. And should exascale computing become the standard in the next several years, then anyone with a stable internet connection could do some serious number crunching on a truly innumerable scale. All right, back to fresh water. Studies clearly show that our global demand of clean water is expected to outpace our global supply of it by nearly 40% in 2030. And with issues like poverty, pollution, and climate change, these facts and figures are only going to get worse. 
However, that being said, exascale computing could really help us out. We'd be able to run efficient simulations of nanotube tests and accomplish weeks of progress in a matter of minutes. We can run diagnostics, fine tune prototypes, and even secure a license to manufacture all years ahead of schedule. And the most exciting part is that the buck of these advances doesn't even stop with water filtration. We have fields like supernova research, in-depth weather prediction, and even particle simulation on an atomic scale that all stand to benefit from the Exascale project. Clearly, we are dealing with an incredibly promising technology, one that has the potential to change the world for generations to come. And I am just downright excited for it, and I hope you all are as well. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.